the lights, the bright lights, the tight, the crowd lights, where you at, ballers? Ladies love me and men, they wanna be me, they pay to come see me, where you at, ballers? Knicks at Bulls, 8 o'clock, United Center, NBA shot clock, on a Tuesday, April the 9th, 2024, an official play, the buy hat is engaged, Knicks minus three. New York comes into tonight's game in an absolute must win. Two and four in their last six straight up, in the middle of a log jam, for the top seeds in the Eastern Conference playoffs. Orlando and New York have the same record, but Orlando has the tiebreaker for the three seed. But New York is only a half game ahead of Cleveland to drop to the fifth seed and not have home court in the first round. New York finishes the season with two games against Chicago, one against Brooklyn, and at Boston in their next game. This is an absolute must win tonight. Chicago comes home off a road non-cover at Orlando to their final home game of the year before going back on the road for three games to close the season in really a brutal travel spot where they have been awful in recent history, going 0-8 in their last eight ball games at home coming off a prior road game. This is the third matchup of the year between these two teams, and margin has defined these games. The Knicks did beat Chicago at Madison Square Garden on January 3rd, 116 to 100, and Chicago got them recently at home on April 5th, 108 to 100. The line in that game was Chicago minus one and a half, same gym, less than a week later, Knicks minus three. Heavy line indicating Knicks to win this game on average by eight points. It is a top play on this Tuesday, New York Knicks minus three. Let's dominate. Pistons at Sixers, Junior Brown back with NBA Shot Clock on this Tuesday, April 9th with another free pick. And we're rocking with the Pistons team total under 103. These teams have played each other three times a season. And the Pistons are averaging 103 points per game. Um, they have not played since December, uh, which is before the Joel Embiid injury. But since then, the Pistons have gotten significantly worse. I mean, they're obviously already one of the two to three worst teams in the league. I'm just talking about their roster. If you were to name their top seven players, at least four or five of them are not available. And this is a team with their top seven players that can't even get to 20 wins. So in this situation where they're going up against a Philly team, that has basically one week to prepare for a playoff run. I just don't see how Detroit is able to compete in this spot. Remember, this is a team that in the last 10 games has only scored over this 103-point number two times in 10 games, and they lost both of those times. So this is a team going nowhere fast uh, versus a team that is trying to get ready for a postseason run who, despite the fact that they've been without their best player for the majority of the season, have a huge amount of expectation. I expect Philly to come in here, take care of business, and actually hold the Pistons under 100 points, which is how they get wins. They're not a team that's looking to outscore you. They're, looking, they're a team that's looking to defend and score efficiently. Give me the 76ers to hold the Pistons to under 103. Let's catch another ticket, y'all. Pacers at Raptors, 7 o'clock, north of the border, an official play, Indiana, minus 8.5. Indiana currently sits with the sixth seed in the Eastern Conference, one game up on Philadelphia to avoid the play-in tournament. This is a must-win, and this is a must-win with emphasis. This is also an incomprehensible statistical buy low. Finding Indiana 0-3 ATS this year versus Toronto. Go back to November. Toronto did beat Indiana on the road in a spot where Indiana has underperformed all year in a back-to-back -back fatigue spot. Indiana did not cover the spread by one point in their only visit to Scotiabank Arena this year. A minus three favorite, 127, 125, and then another home loss outright on February 26th. 
The last two covers by Toronto were mostly propped up by huge efforts by Scotty Barnes, who is not playing tonight. This is a totally different Toronto roster. Really, potentially a G League quality team gutted at the trade deadline, trying to advance their draft position more than anything else. This team doesn't have a legitimate big on the roster. And guys like Pascal Siakam and Miles Turner should eat tonight. The line is telling you that story. This is a significant line jump on the road for Indiana. A minus five and a half home favorite, seven and a half on the road, indicating a win by 13 points. Toronto is 0-9 ATS last nine at home versus playoff teams. This has blowout written all over it. This is a buy low on Indiana. 0-3 versus Toronto this year. Buy it, live it, love it, and let's dominate. Indiana, minus eight and a half, one unit. Heat at Hawks, Junior Brown back in the NBA. Shot clock on this Tuesday, April 9th with another free pick. And we're rocking with the Atlanta Hawks, plus three and a half. And I'm just gonna keep this pretty simple. I'm not laying three and a half points with the Miami Heat on the road. Uh, especially not against a Hawks team that despite um, their poor season, you know, by preseason expectations, they're still competing and they're still competing hard. Uh, they're going to be in the playing tournament, so they're going to have to win two games to get into the playoffs. And you can tell that they've been ramping up for that inevitability. So uh, I'm not trying to say that the Heat are not doing the same. The Heat are still within shouting distance of the sixth seed. But let me just say this, as someone who, I kind of like make fun of heat culture because I just don't like gimmicky things like that, even though heat culture is very real, it's probably the realest culture in the NBA other than the San Antonio Spurs for the last like 25 years, so no disrespect to heat culture, that shit is not a switch you can just turn on and off, like I get it, We you gotta be scared of them in the playoffs and all that. But just really watch this team during the regular season. The lineups are all over the place. Their offense stinks. Their defense is very good, but can be inconsistent on a night-to-night -night basis. You just really have no idea what you're going to get from this team. So can they go into Atlanta and blow out the, the Hawks? Of course they can. At their best, Miami is just much better than the Hawks. But Miami's not consistent. And neither are the Hawks, by the way. But on their home floor, where they like to put on a show where they really compete their hardest... I'm going to take the Hawks plus the points over this inconsistent Miami team because that's what we do here. Miami wins their games by one and a half points a game. That's their margin of victory. Now they're laying off, uh, three and a half on the road. No thank you. Give me the Atlanta Hawks plus three and a half. Let's cash another ticket, y'all. Magic at Rockets, 8 o'clock. Toyota Center, Houston, Texas. An official play, Orlando minus two Orlando's in the same situation as the Knicks, right in the middle of the playoff picture in the Eastern Conference. Could finish anywhere between the two seed and the seven, making every game of utmost importance. Orlando is coming off of a previous home game, going on the road for a three game trip. 14, eight and one ATS in their last 23 on the road. Very, very good, but more noticeably great in the first game of a road trip. Orlando is 7-1-1 one one ATS last nine in the first game on the road off a of previous home game, and they are 10-4 ATS at the West this year, with this being their final game on the road, this one at Houston. This is the second game of the year between these two teams. Finding a Houston team that did compete very hard this year, but is officially eliminated, playing for pride only, which we don't expect to overtake the actual motivation for Orlando in this game. The season did open on October 25th in Orlando with an Orlando blowout against Houston, 116 to 86. Orlando, minus one and a half home, stronger on the road, indicating a win expectancy by six points. Tonight, an official play, NBA Shot Clock. On this Tuesday, Orlando, minus two. Let's cash this ticket. Celtics at Bucks. Junior Brown back with NBA Shot Clock. On this Tuesday, April 9th, with another free pick. And we're rocking with the Celtics money line in the first half. My best bet of the day. Um, I don't want to go on a rant about the Milwaukee Bucks. 
uh, losing to the, who is it, to the Wizards, to the Raptors, and someone just as bad as those two teams in consecutive games, plus they lost to the Knicks. They've lost six of their last seven games. Um, it's kind of hard to, to describe what they are. I'm just going to say this. I've watched their last couple of games, and they're a team that doesn't have an identity. Um, I can give you a bunch of different things that they try, but I can't tell you what they do. And that's a massive problem a week before the playoffs. Um, you know who doesn't have that problem? The Boston Celtics. I know exactly what they're going to do. I know exactly what they're going to run. And that's why I'm taking them in the first half. They've been the best first half team in the entire NBA from start to finish. It hasn't been particularly close. They've been a dominant team. As, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that as a capper, uh, Boston is the number one uh, ticket in the NBA in the first half. If you blindly bet that, you are making a sizable profit at this point in the season. And I don't see any reason why that should change in this specific spot. Boston is not going to want Milwaukee to get right against them. They're going to want to keep Milwaukee in the mud. And if we're talking about how the Celtics are playing recently, they're playing basically one, they're playing three quarters. Their starters no longer play the fourth quarter because they already have their playoff positioning sealed. I bet the Celtics the last time actually, uh, they were in a situation where they should have put in their starters against Sacramento. The Kings went on like a 16 to two run in the fourth quarter and Missoula still wouldn't put the starters in. So betting Boston full games is just not possible right now. Uh, but while they're still playing their starters in the first half, they are significantly better than the Bucks, and I'm getting them at a cheap line. You know, y'all know I don't be passing up sales. Give me the Boston Celtics money line in the first half, and let's do what we've been doing all season, y'all, and let's cash another ticket. Spurs at Grizzlies, eight o'clock. FedEx Forum, a top lead in this game. San Antonio on the money line minus one thirty. This is the final matchup of the year between these Southwest Division opponents finding absolute domination on the side of Memphis, dating back seasons. Memphis is 14-0 straight up, last 14, against the Spurs. And now you're finding San Antonio favored on the road. Let the line tell you that story, that a situational reversal is coming tonight. San Antonio is playing great ball at the back end of this season. 6-1 ATS last seven. Only non-cover in their previous game. A double overtime loss to Philadelphia. Memphis is also hot, but not nearly as impressive in the category of the opponent. 3-1 ATS last four. Two against Detroit. One against a cratering Milwaukee team. And as I mentioned, huge revenge in this matchup. The last time these teams played on March 22nd in San Antonio. San Antonio could not shoot the basketball, particularly from three. Seven for 38 from the three-point line. That is 18.4%. We don't expect that to happen tonight. We expect San Antonio to beat the Grizzlies for the first time since 2019 or 20. An opportunity to dominate a top lean. Spurs on the money line, minus 130. Let's dominate. Washington at Minnesota. Minnesota, Junior Brown back with NBA Shot Clock on this Tuesday, April 9th with another free pick. And we're rocking with the Minnesota team total under 120 and a half. Few reasons for this. Uh, number one, this team just doesn't score like that. In the last 20 games, they've got over 120 points two times. Last game against the Lakers, a team that loves to run up and down. The Lakers are fourth in the league in pace. And against the Raptors, who are openly tanking. Minnesota is not looking to get up and down the court and put up a bunch of points. They do it on the defensive end, which was, which is why my initial lean was actually to the under uh, for Washington, but their team total is only 104. It's, it's a really, really no, low number. And the thing that really makes me take this Minnesota under 120 and a half is the spot. This is, this is the definition of a classic look ahead spot. They, Minnesota plays at Denver tomorrow and Minnesota and Denver are currently tied for first place in the Western Conference. So that's a blockbuster heavyweight clash 
basically a playoff game being played tomorrow. So I just don't expect Minnesota ex to exert maximum effort on the front end of a back-to-back -back against one of the bottom five teams in the league. I think they come out, do a professional job, put up about 110 points, hold the Wizards to close to about 100 points, and get out of there with a victory before they take on their arch nemesis, at least this season, the Denver Nuggets. So give me the Minnesota Timberwolves under 120 and a half in this look-ahead spot. Let's cash another ticket, y'all. Nuggets at Jazz, 9 o'clock in Salt Lake City. A top lean in this game, under 224 and a half. This is the fourth matchup of the year between these two teams. Having seen the Utah roster turn over multiple times, Utah is currently 0-12 in their last 12 ball games in complete tank mode. Denver's in a tough spot tonight, a front end back-to-back, -back, playing Minnesota tomorrow night. So we want to avoid the game side and discuss the total with some brevity. This is the fourth matchup, as I mentioned. The first one, played on October 3rd in Denver, did go under with significance, 110 to 102. And now we're coming off of two consecutive bloated totals, 124-111 and 142-121, a game which played to Denver at 66.3% from the field. I believe their highest shooting percentage of the year in a single game. We don't expect that to continue against this fledgling roster from Utah. And books agree, moving the line down at open from 227 to 224 and a half, indicating on the average 222 points. If you guys wanna bet this game, it is NBA Shot Clock, a lean or an official on every game. Bet the under 224 and a half, and let's cash this ticket. Kings at Thunder, Junior Brown back with NBA Shot Clock on this Tuesday, April 9th with another free pick. And we're rocking with the under 226 and a half in this game. A lot of moving parts here. We'll start with the Kings. Um, since Malik Monk went down, uh, Kevin Herter also uh, announced out uh, for the season with shoulder surgery. Their offense is really struggling. It's because their team is not really that deep. Um, they need those guys, especially Malik Monk, who is probably going to finish top two uh, for six man of the year, basically between him and Nas Reed. So you're taking out a, another starter, essentially, with the production that Malik Monk gives you. It's been very difficult for their offense to generate um, the, their normal output. Now, on the flip side, um, Oklahoma City is getting SGA back into the lineup. I just checked the injury report. I don't see him anywhere on there. And you would think that that's going to make them better, and it certainly will in the long run. But we've seen this over and over again in the NBA where a high-volume scorer, a high-usage rate guy, comes back into the lineup and it kind of disrupts the flow uh, that the other guys have been in. Now, J-Dub is still out, uh, which is another reason why I'm taking the under here. Um, you know, J Jalen Williams has proven himself to be the second-best player uh, on the Thunder and a borderline all-star. He's been very, very good this season. And with him out, I love the under here. I love the under with Shea coming back into the lineup. Probably going to have some rust after all the time off that he's had. Plus Sacramento's um, scoring problems since, you know, two of their top seven players have been ruled out for the season. Every single thing I've just said is the reason why I'm taking the under 226 and a half. I think it's just a little bit too high for where these teams at, are at at this point of the season. So let's go ahead and take that under 226 and a half. Y'all know what it is. Let's catch another ticket. Clippers at Suns, 10 o'clock, Footprint Center in Phoenix. The top play of this card, the best bet of the day, Phoenix minus three and a half. Phoenix remains at home at the Footprint Center in their final home game of the year, off a loss the other night against New Orleans, a spot you want to buy low on a team that is 10-4 ATS last 14 in the game after an outright loss. This is a desperation spot for seeding in the Western Conference playoffs with Phoenix, New Orleans, Sacramento, and the Lakers only separated by one and a half games for the six through nine seed. None of these teams wanting to go to the play-in tournament 
The other side of this game finds the Clippers hovering in purgatory, if you will. Three back of OKC for a top seed, two ahead of Dallas, can't fall to the play-in tournament. Motivation not even close to that of Phoenix. This is also a double revenge game for Phoenix, having taken margin losses twice this year to the Clippers, 131-122 and 138-111. In that most recent game, played in LA, the Clippers shot 62.4% from the field and just scorched the gym. That won't happen again in a spot that Phoenix will be turned up with game seven mentality and the line telling you that story. Six and a half Clippers home, Phoenix minus two at home, indicating an eight point win. On average, it is the best bet of the day on this Tuesday, April the 9th, NBA Shot Clock, let's dominate. Pelicans at Blazers, Junior Brown back with NBA Shot Clock on this Tuesday, April 9th with another free pick. We're rocking with the Pelicans in the first half, minus seven and a half. Pretty big number, especially for a Pelicans team that's been struggling lately. I think that the Pelicans turned a corner with their last win against the Phoenix Suns. A massive psychological win after a four-game losing streak. A win that tied them with Phoenix in the standing. So the Pelicans are in sixth. The Suns are in, uh, sorry, the Pelicans are in seventh. The Suns are in sixth. And this game tonight against the Blazers is massive because they pick up a win here. They then play the Kings, the Lakers, and the Warriors, all teams that are competing with the Pelicans for playoff positioning. So essentially, the Pelicans are already in the playoffs. And the reason I'm taking them minus seven and a half in the first half is that's been one of the most consistent bets of the NBA season. The Pelicans have been the second best first half team in the NBA behind the Boston Celtics. And I expect that to continue against a Blazers team that's already in next season mode. This Pelicans team really has a lot to play for. Brandon Ingram just resumed, uh, you know, on-court activities, already ramping up um, to, to get ready for the playoffs. So this is a team that has a lot to look forward to, a lot to play for. Not sure they cover this full game spread, but on this season, they have been covering first half spreads, and I expect them to do that in a must-win situation, which is basically the case for them for the rest of the season. Pelicanos getting ready for the playoffs. Give me them in the first half, minus seven and a half. Let's catch another ticket, y'all. Mavericks at Hornets, out of conference basketball. Seven o'clock in Charlotte. A top lean in this game, under 221 and a half. This is a tough game to talk the sides, as Dallas is in a front end back-to-back -back with a big game at Miami tomorrow night, and Charlotte is scrappy at the back end of this year at home. The total has some availability as Dallas is only allowing 104 points per game to their opponents on the road last six. And Charlotte coming off of back-to-back -back overs at home is supposed to regress back to where they were seven and two to the home under previous nine. The last time these teams played in November in Dallas, Lomelo Ball was still playing for the Hornets and he went off for 30 points in an over 124 to 118. The line that day was 235, moved down to 219 and a half, indicating Dallas will continue their great defensive effort late season and Charlotte will have difficulty scoring the ball. Top lane in this game, under 221 and a half. Let's dominate. Warriors at Lakers, Junior Brown back with NBA Shot Clock on this Tuesday, April 9th with another free pick and we're rocking with the Lakers minus two and a half. This is gonna be a very short video because this is me playing the number. If I got three and a half or more, I'm taking the Golden State Warriors plus the points. I get three or less at home, taking the Lakers. These are two very evenly matched teams. This is essentially a playoff game. So the, the Stable Center or the Crypto.com Arena, whatever you wanna call it, uh, the LA crowd is gonna be rocking. Um, not to say that Golden State is not going to play their A game. This is a very good, difficult game to cap because both of these teams are playing their best basketball of the season at this moment, and there's a lot on the line in this specific game. The, the key for me, other than the number, which is basically what this bet is based on, is just the matchup itself. The Warriors' big men have been horrendous this season, and if you want to count Draymond Green as a, a big man, then 
exclude him from that equation despite his uh, his problems staying on the court. When he actually plays, he's playing very well. The rest of their front court has been an absolute disaster, which is why the team is struggling the way it is. And front court is the strength of the Lakers team. Uh, I think the Lakers offense has been consistently good for an extended period of time. Since the All-Star break, the Lakers are fifth in offensive efficiency. On their home court, on a short number with this crowd, absolutely rocking. And it, not only because of the, the stakes, but because of the opponent. Curry versus LeBron has defined the last decade. And this is one of the last times we're really going to get to see this. So, with just so much on the line, I'm going to take the, the team that's getting the short number. The Lakers minus 2.5 on their home court. Y'all know what it is. Let's cash another ticket.